It's official. Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns is now a full-scale military mission. Hey everyone, Templar74 here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! video, and today's Yu-Gi-Oh! video is going to be my thoughts and impressions regarding the latest episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, episode 53, The Bounty Hunter Blood Shepherd. And I gotta be honest with you guys, this episode was really worth the wait because there was a delay getting this episode out this morning, but the actual episode made up for it in leaps and bounds. It was very well animated. We got some very good and very interesting backstory to the character known as Blood Shepherd, as well as a couple of very interesting things that no one expected. And boy, those summaries, we were way, way off. But we'll talk about all that in a minute. So without further ado, let's talk about the actual episode. So the episode begins with a brief recap of last week's episode. We're watching Soul Burner and Go Onisaka battle. And of course, Soul Burner wiping the floor with Go Onisaka and Go's whole team tangent about you can't always win thing before storming off. We then transition to the actual episode of the week. We're back with Playmaker and I. They're trying to flee uh, Blood Shepherd, who's hot on their trail through this restricted area. And Blood Shepherd is very interesting because he shares some similar traits to a former antagonist in Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. I say former loosely in quotes, and we'll talk about that just in a moment. But anyway, we're watching these guys. They're trying to get through this restricted area. Blood Shepherd's hot on their trail. And finally, he just starts shooting at him, like literally shooting at him. And finally, it just gets to the point where Playmaker can't dodge him anymore. And Blood Shepherd says, you have to the count of three to decide. Either you can duel or surrender. And it's very interesting because he does the whole count three thing, kind of like Revolver does and Playmaker does. So we see this go on. He counts one, snaps his finger. Two, snaps his finger. But he doesn't wait for three. At two, he starts shooting again at Playmaker and I. So I, of course, during all this time, he's trying to help get away from this guy. And he even does so by using his secret weapon, unlocking the Data Storm. But alas, that doesn't work. Blood Shepherd wants nothing to do with it. He goes right through the Data Storm, hot on his trail. Finally, Playmaker's like, we can't just ignore him. We're going to have to duel him. And we get the duel, it's about ready to get underway, and Blood Shepherd shows another very interesting trait, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So we're getting ready to have this duel start. We then go back to the real world, because as it turns out, back in range, Blue Angel, or should I say Blue Girl now, we'll talk about that in just a second as well, that was the unexpected thing I mentioned earlier, and Ghost Girl, they're actually using a stealth program of their own and they're actually watching this happen from the heavily secure zone. They're watching all these drones go around, scanning everything, they're using a stealth program, the same one that Ghost Girl sent to Kusengi earlier on in the series, or the season rather, they're using the same thing to watch all this. So we see that. We then go back to the real world and find out that uh, Akira hired them. Well, he hired Ghost Girl, actually, to basically go into this restricted area. And he tells her and Aoi about the six Ignis and how the one that Playmaker has is one. There are five others. And we also hear him tell them about Cyverse World and how it was mysteriously destroyed. And the duelist that went up against Playmaker last time vanished into this restricted zone. And so basically he hires Ghost Girl at three times the normal rate to go behind Solid Technology's back to try to find the Ignis other than the bounty hunters. And Akita's reason for doing this is pretty simple. He said, I don't know what the Ignis' intentions are. Or the, do they see us as the enemy? Do they have a hidden agenda? We need to find out. Solid Technology is only concerned about the money. They're only concerned about Ignis. Akita is actually concerned what will happen if the Ignis survive. So we see all this go on. But as he hires Ghost Girl to do this and agrees to her rate of three times the normal to go ahead and do this because she's going to have bounty hunters going after her if she's not operating under Solid Technology, Aoi just says flat out, I'm going with you. And at first, Ghost Girl or Emma at this point really doesn't know what to say about it. She just tries to tell Akita she's not ready. She's going to drag me down. But Akira caves and lets his sister go with Ghost Girl to do this and assures her that you need to succeed. You need to come home safely. This is a mission where the entire fate of our world depends on it. So Blue Angel agrees to do this, or Aoi agrees to do this. We then go back to Reigns. We're seeing the duel start to kick off between Blood Shepherd 
and we also see Playmaker there. And Blood Shepherd actually takes the first move by summoning a drone monster and places a card face down. And it's funny because as the duel starts, he's giving this impression that he doesn't know what he's doing. He makes like this stupid amateur move, although his drone has a nice effect to where it can re regain your uh, life points during the duel after the turn is over. So no matter what playmaker attacks it with, with the exception of one particular link monster that appeared in his last duel, it basically it gives it away. The eye gives it away. He's going to lose. So playmaker is still kind of like, hmm something ain't right here but i is still cheering saying this is an easy win your eyes an idiot it just told us what we needed to do and so playmaker finally makes his move and he brings out elphase which is the monster he used in the previous duel as well along with a token and we actually see him summon backup secretary we see a link summon that gets us to shooting code talker which is the link monster in question from the previous duel if you guys remember shooting code talkers effect it allows it to attack three times so yeah we're getting this going and then we go back we actually transfer back to ghost girl and blue angel they're crossing into the secure zone now into the restricted area and Ghost Girl is kind of acting strange about Blood Shepherd. And finally, Blue Angel just questions her about it. She's like, so you know Blood Shepherd. And that's when Ghost Girl drops the bombshell. I know who he is, and so does your brother. And we get this recap. Apparently, the three of them fought together in what became the precursor to Vrains against another enemy. He had managed to turn this computer virus into a bomb and was threatening to detonate it. And we actually see a brief battle breakout. And we learn about Blood Shepherd. He actually goes after this guy kind of the same way he went after Playmaker. He says, you have to the count of three to surrender or die. Those are your options. And he gets to three, and he actually uses Ghost Girl and Akira as cover so he can go in and destroy this threat and get rid of the bomb. So basically, he goes on. Akira's angry at him, to say the least. He's like, you used us as bait. And Blood Shepherd's just like, I got the mission accomplished. Minimum. The minimum is all that's necessary. And he takes off. So yeah, it turns out that Akira and Ghost Girl have fought with Blood Shepherd before. They actually know who he is. And apparently he knows who Ghost Girl really is because he calls her Emma during this flashback. And it bothers Ghost Girl. She's like, he knows who I am. So anyway, as the girls finish their conversation, they pass through the secure zone and they decide to remove the stealth program. And when the stealth program's removed, we see something very interesting happen to Blue Angel. We see Ghost Girl, she comes in with her current outfit for Season 2, but then Blue Angel, the stealth program, drops, and she's in this new attire that makes her look much more mature. She looks more like Ghost Girl than she does her old self, and even Ghost Girl compliments her on it. She's like, that makes you look very mature, and Blue Angel basically says at this point, I cannot do this if this is a secret mission as my current avatar, pretty much, so she changed it. And Ghost Girl dubs it Blue Girl. Rather than Blue Angel, it's now Blue Girl. So we see this go on. We got introduced to Blue Girl. And apparently, I don't know if you guys remember this or not. There was a big Twitter debate that got out when the summary for this episode actually came out. And basically in the summary, it said a mysterious person would appear. And from the sounds of it, everybody was getting the impression that it was possibly going to be Revolver who showed up or made a cameo appearance somehow, just based on how the summary was worded. But it turns out that this was just a reference to Blue Girl. So, I mean, take that as what you will. I think Blue Girl's awesome, but at the same time, I'm kind of disappointed Revolver ain't here. He's already one of my, he's already my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! antagonist, in case you couldn't tell. But uh, anyway, I digress. That's what we were wrong about with the summary. So Blue Girl's introduced, and we go back to Playmaker. He's in the duel with Blood Shepherd, and now he's got Shooting Code Talker out. But before he can even make a move, Blood Shepherd activates his Continuous Trap card. And what this trap card does is it basically entraps Shooting Code Talker. It chains him up. Can't be used for Link Summoning. Can't attack. His effects are negated. He's pretty much useless at this point. It's kind of like the um, 
shadow spell trap card that we're all used to from the dual monster saga to where basically that monster can't do anything and it's completely useless to you. Just pretty much taking a spot on your playing field is essentially what it is. So now that, now that Shooting Code Talker is completely disabled, can't attack, we actually see uh, Blood Shepherd, he actually tells his AI, I don't need you anymore, butt out. And he also reveals that he programmed his AI to lie. He doesn't trust AI. And that was the other big thing that's like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute here. Because it was a dead ringer for Revolver. Because if you guys remember, Revolver said it himself. You cannot trust AI. They're evil. I do not trust them. I will not duel with them. So again, that's kind of a very interesting thing here that Blood Shepherd is sharing in common with Revolver. So we see that go on. Finally, Blood Shepherd ditches his AI. He's like, I don't need you no more. And he actually Link summons. He brings out his first Link monster of the duel, which is linked to Battle Drone Sergeant. And then he Link summons again with his drone tokens, thanks to his continuous trap card, and brings out Link 3 Battle Drone General. So I sees this and he's like, oh no, a general, this is bad. And that's pretty much where the episode leaves off is we got Link 3, Battle Drone General on one side and a completely disabled and useless shooting code talker on Playmaker side. So yeah, that was pretty much the episode in a nutshell. It was crazy how much was going on. And I really, really enjoyed this episode. It was extremely well animated. And I cannot believe I forgot to mention this. I apologize for that so much. As Playmaker and Blood Shepherd are going through and dueling through the restricted area, it turns out that the restricted area is kind of like those old maze puzzle games like you'd find in the puzzle books with your crosswords and your word searches. That's pretty much what this is. They're basically going through all these different corridors to get into the central zone. So yeah, I can't believe I forgot to mention that earlier. That was completely my bad. That is the part that was so well animated I almost fell out of my seat. But anyway, again, I digress on that whole thing. Overall, great episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns. Here's the blue girl. Really happy to see that. I mean, who couldn't be happy to see that? But uh, anyway, overall, I give this episode a 8.5 out of 10. This is really a good episode, and I encourage everybody to watch it. But as always, in the comment section down below, let me know what you guys thought of this week's episode. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just eh there? What are your thoughts on Blue Girl? What are your thoughts on Blood Shepherd and his similarities to Revolver? What do you guys think is going to happen in this particular duel? Do you think we're going to learn just a little bit more about Blood Shepherd? What do you guys think Blood Shepherd's real intentions are here? Just let me know what your guys' thoughts are about all this in the comment section down below. Because as always, I enjoy hearing from you. All right, everybody, as always, Templar74 signing off. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll talk to you all next time. Goodbye, everybody.